Hey, yeah, uh, welcome to whatever, pretty much. Uh, I guess you could say just Calvin, whatever. I pretty much uh, stuff that I, that I talk about, whatever. Anyway, um, on January 5th, I organized a um, a uh, webinar uh, with uh, Warren Mosler with the help of uh, uh, Real Progressives. Um, and they did a stupendous job, loved every minute of it. Uh, and I hope to do more in the future. Uh, but anyway, this is not about the collaboration. This is about um, MMT, which was what it was based on in regards to the, uh, the talk with Warren Mosler. Warren Mosler literally went through like a 20 minute presentation and the rest of the time he took questions um, and talked to people. Um, I don't know of many people that would take like all the 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then spend the rest of the two hours talking and answering questions. Um, it's usually more of the presentation than maybe a half hour of questions and answer. Anyway, so uh, big ups to him as far as that part goes. Um, anyway, so uh, one of the questions was about uh, reparations, uh, African American community or basically uh, brown America, black America, however you want to call it there. Natural Americans are the way they, uh, they're, they're not just from Africa is what I'm saying. Anyway, um, not to seem racist. Um, anyway, so uh, they got into it. Well, she, she, she got into it in the comment section, apparently, about CRTs. Um, uh, anyways, I'll go over that in some, some other time. Anyway, so let's see. She then sent me uh, through DM on Twitter um, stuff about uh, like Wizard of Oz and uh, the the uh, hints of what what the Wizard of Oz was actually about. Um, but she also sent me um, a film. Uh, I forget what it was about. Uh, overall, it was about. Uh, the Federal Reserve, the monetary system from the from 1913, when the Federal Reserve Act was uh, implemented, and the reason why it was implemented, and later on. Um, but anyway, so she sent me this, and I looked at it, and there was a few things that uh, I knew to be wrong as far as that part goes. So um, anyway, so let's see. Uh, this uh, the person who was actually doing this whole thing. Uh, where is that? Giovanna Lane. I'm not sure who this person is, uh, but apparently she was one that was uh, presenting the case for MMT uh, with the Green Party. Now let's get to this part right here. Um, the Banking and Monetary Reform Committee is developing a number. Uh, by the way, this was like 2018, just so we can, I think. I'm not sure where the data is on this, but um, yeah. Anyway, so I guess it was 2018. They had a vote uh, whether they're going to implement a monetary theory into their um banking strategy uh, uh, uh the uh, the the reform committee part anyway so let's see in the article mentioned above uh which okay let's go to the article itself after reading an article about information that was presented to the lavender caucus recently by a proponent of the monetary theory I recognize the need to provide the explanation to the members of the Green Party of the United States of the difference between the teachings of MMT and the real need for monetary reform as contained in the Green Party platforms, or platform rather. And this need for the explanation was further illustrated by a press release published recently at the Green Party website, wherein, wherein the Green Party of Pennsylvania espoused uh, re, uh, reformation of our economic uh, economic model in accordance with MMT. Uh, obviously, Green Party members are eager to have information about the best way of funding the Green New Deal and the best reforms needed for that funding. Uh, I have also had a couple of Green Party members tell me that they thought that MMT was part of the Green Party platform. It is not. No, uh, and apparently, according to, to a vote, it, w it was not a part of modern monetary theory, even though uh, Howie Hawkins, uh, the the um, the presidential candidate of 2020 for Green Party, uh, a member in 2016 or so, uh, he was actually talking about funding uh, the Green Party's Green New Deal with either 
borrowing or printing i think you said printing but um uh, spend, uh yeah uh, printing uh but anyway so he 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 has that's one thing that kind of got me involved with the howie hawkins down not involved but liking the howie hawkins uh campaign as far as that part was the fact that at that at that time i was i was very new to mmt and still am kind of um i don't a lot of it, is, it hasn't really sunk in uh but anyway that's neither here nor there point being is I see the proponents of MMT have attack, uh, have been attacking the GPUS platform on monetary reform, probably because they do not want to have attention drawn to the immediate need for monetary reform and their own emission of dealing with in their mo model of economic reform. It is common practice for most economists to ignore the monetary system. The elite in power uh, do not want the knowledge about the system widely known. Uh, in the article mentioning above, uh, Giovanni uh, Giovanni excuse me, Lane, who, who who presented MMT information to the Lavender Caucus, claims that the U.S. government does not need to tax or borrow money uh, to fund spending. However, under our present uh, monetary system, the U.S. government would not be able to spend at all without taxing or borrowing. You see, you see that's the pro That's the thing. MMT is actually trying to teach people the the opposite of what the current e economic system shows them. Uh, the Keynesian and the uh, neoclassical uh, is the other way around. Uh, if you go the opposite direction of what of what they're talking about, you have a closer chance of getting to what the economy is it ha uh, actually performs at. Um, Anyway, so let's see. Uh, da, da, da. However, under the print, okay, yeah. Uh, let me spend our tax to MMT and talking point del uh, delivery omit the fact that the government does not directly create new money, but delegated the function to the commercial banks when it passed the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Well, let's see. I was trying to be prepared for this. Let's see. Uh, let's see first what... Uh, what does the Federal Reserve do? Uh, the Fed explained. The 11th edition of the Fed explained what the central bank does formally. The Federal Reserve System proposes a uh, function, details the structure, responsibility, and work of the U.S. central bank system. The Federal Reserve System performs five functions to promote the effective operations uh, operation of the U.S. economy and more generally to serve the public interest. Okay, anyway, uh, it includes three key entities, the Board of Governors, uh, 12 Federal Reserve Banks, and the Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, over, uh, overview of the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve uh, performs five key functions in the public interest to promote the health of the U.S. economy and the stability of the U.S. federal financial system. Conducting monetary policy, which is never. Oh, well, I'm, I'm actually kind of skipping steps here. Uh, the three key and uh, the three key uh, system entities: the Board of Governors, the Federal Reserve Banks, and the Federal Open Market Committee work together to promote the health of the U.S. economy and the stability of the U.S. financial system. Conducting monetary policy. The Federal Reserve sets U.S. monetary policy to promote maximum employment and stable process of prices in the U.S. economy. Um, there's a video for that. You can always go up there and check it out. Uh, for promoting financial system stability, the Federal Reserve monitors financial system risk and engages at home and abroad to help ensure the system supports a healthy economy, the U.S. household, communities, and businesses. Okay, so five, uh, supervising and regulating financial institutions and activities. The Federal Reserve, uh, the Federal Reserve promotes the safety and soundness of individual financial institutions and monitors their impact on the financial system as a whole. Okay, so I thought. Was, okay, anyway, so six, fostering payment and settlement system safety and efficiency. The Federal Reserve works to promote a safe, e efficient, and accessible system for U.S. Trans, uh, transactions. 
Uh, okay, so number seven, promoting consumer protection and, cons and community development. The Federal Reserve advances supervision, community reinvestment, and research to improve understanding of the impacts of financial services, policies, and practices on consumer and communities. So let's see. And this, okay, no, this is not what I was looking for. Let's see, this should be it right here. This is pretty much what, no, if I can get it. <laughs> All right, come on. It's happening in Slowpoke. Okay, so this act is the thing that got the Federal Reserve to be a thing. As you can see, uh, what is in the 1913 Federal Reserve Act? The 1913 Federal Reserve Act is legislation in the United States that created the Federal Reserve System. Congress passed the Federal Reserve, just like Congress and pass whatever spending bill it wants and fresh money is put into the economy through loans and other uh ways like for instance the uh the spending they did uh in 2020 the 1400 dollar uh unquote uh, stimulus package the 400 i think it was and 600 one uh i think it was 600 or i think it was 400 um but the federal reserve did that through the banking system Anyway, uh, Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act, established economic stability in the U.S. by introducing a central bank to oversee monetary policy. So they are the ones who opened up the central bank. And there's about five or six central banks in the United States in about five different states. Uh, the 1913 Federal Reserve Act created the Federal Reserve System known simply as the Fed. That's why they have a board of governors. Uh, it was implemented to establish economic stability in the U.S. by introducing a central bank to oversee monetary policy. The Federal Reserve Act is one of the most influential laws shaping the U.S. financial system. Now, let us understand what the 1913 Reserve Act, uh, the law sets out the purpose, structure, and function of the Federal Reserve System Congress can amend the Federal Reserve Act and has done so several times. Before 1913, financial panics were common occurrences be, uh, because investors were unsure of the safety of their, ba uh, their bank deposits. Private financiers, such as J.P. Morgan Change, Change, <laughs> Chase, uh, J.P. Morgan, which is now also Chase, uh, <laughs> who built out the government apparently in 1895, which is kind of interesting, uh, often provided lines of credit to provide stability in the financial sector. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, the 1913 Federal, did I get that? No, yeah, yeah, I did. okay. 1913 Federal Act, Reserve Act, signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson, gave the Fed the ability to print money and policy tools to ensure economic stability. So, they effectively did give uh, the United States the power, or Congress, or yeah, Congress in this case, to pass spending bills and have them then allocate that money to whatever programs was was going to be had as far as that part goes. Um, uh, let's see the the Fed system. The Federal Reserve Banks, each in charge of regional uh, districts, are in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, uh, Cleveland, uh, Richmond, St. Louis, Atlanta, Chicago, Minneapolis, Kansas City, Dallas, and San Francisco. The seven members of the Board of Governors are nominated by the President and approved by the U.S. Senate. Each governor serves a maximum of 14 years. And that's too long, but anyway, and each governor's appointment is staggered uh, by two years to limit the power of the president. In addition, the law did, so basically, in the, yeah, to limit the to limit the power of the president. Basically, yeah, bankers have like all the freaking control as far as that part goes. So it doesn't matter if we if we vote, I suppose. But if we keep voting for the same people who get paid by the same people, then we're going to have the same people, either way, the same type of people in office. Anyway, 
Uh, so it's the power of the president addition. Uh, the law dictates that appointments to pre presentation, representation, excuse me, of all board sectors of the U.S. economy. So here are the, well, let's see, I think, yeah, I was going to say, uh, one of them actually had a, um, two of them empty seats. So there you go. Uh, so you have one, two, three, four, four governors of a, well, it appears to be six, um, six chairs. So there you go. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I'm kind of getting too much into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun for me, but anyway, let's see. What is this? Uh, nope, I already went to that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's kind of go back into here. So let's see. Uh, basically, what I just did kind of, I think, kind of just proved like half of what she said as far as that part goes. Uh, Stephanie Charlton uses this. Uh, let's see the uh, uh, nah. the country that controls its own currency. Actually, the country that creates and controls its own currency, which is what the United States can do, which is what Japan can do, which is what the UK does. Pretty much anybody that has a central bank and can create their own currency, as long as they control. Uh, the interest rates on those, uh, if it, as long as uh, a flexible uh, interest rate, both internationally and uh, nationally, then prices fluctuate, which I think dependent on the international uh, trade prices for goods and services. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not that proficient in it yet. But anyway. See, uh, Dr. Kelton defines the national debt as nothing more than a historic record of all the of all the dollars that were spent into the economy and not taxed back. If you look up, oh, you know, let me see. Let's see. I, da, 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 da. I do a lot of stuff about COVID too. Actually, I'm updating on that. Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's see. I, I use Bing as far as that part goes. I'm not I'm not big on Microsoft. Oh, actually, that is Microsoft. But anyway, that's kind of foolish for me to say. Anyway, so let's see. Actually, you know what? I'll go back to this. Pause this. Let's see, I think I was trying to I was trying to talk about uh, taxes that are not um, taxed out. Uh, are 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 what is going toward the national debt, quote unquote. And that was what Stephanie Tolton was saying. This is from the home treasury .gov. This is um, tax expenditures under laws. Uh, Congressional Budget Act of 1974, um, which is a public law, 93-344, requires that a list of expenditures be included in a budget. Tax expenditures are defined in the law as revenue lo uh, losses attributed to the provisions of the federal law tax laws which allow a special exclusion exemption or deduction from gross income or which provide special credit a, prefer a preferential rate of tax or a deferred of tax liability these exemptions may be viewed as alternatives to other policy instruments such as spending or regulatory programs Identifications and measurements of tax expenditures depend cru uh, crucially on the baseline tax system again, uh, against which the actual tax system is compared. The tax expenditure estimates presented in this document are patterned on a comprehensive income tax, which define income as a sum of consumption and change in net wealth in a given period of time. Uh, as important assumption underlying uh, important assumption underlying each tax expenditure estimate reported below is the other part of okay anyway so but that is what tax expenditure is it's literally a lost uh, loss of tax revenue for the government so when Stephanie Charlton says that, uh, that is uh, that it is the that is the what is, uh, dang it <laughs> I lost it 
when, when she says that basically the national debt is what the government spent into the economy without before without taxing that's what they're talking that's what she's talking about it's taxes and tax loopholes that big corporations take advantage of and don't pay very little tax or no tax at all in regards to percentage of what taxes they don't pay in regards to you know any kind of business bo or whatever you know or anyway so that's what she's referring to as far as i can see anyway let's see the national okay nothing more than a historic record of all the dollars that were spent into the economy and not taxed back out that's true and current, uh, currently being said in the form of Treasury Securities, Dr. Kelton attempts through this statement to minimize the present state of crisis caused by the ever-increasing U.S. government debt. Okay, again, what I just read kind of takes that out, I, I would say, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, and in regards to, uh, I can kind of see that in regards to them putting that money back into Treasury bonds. I can see that. Because either way, that is going, that's, a treasury bond is literally a savings account. Uh, after, say, five, 10 years, um, that treasury bond uh, matures and it, and cashed out. The, the, the Fed can turn around and pay it back at face value plus whatever interest that was that included in that. That's how that works. And most times, those are actually, uh, as if you, if you attended the the uh, Warren Mosler uh, webinar uh, on the 5th, uh, he mentions, I believe, that when he uh, owned and ran a bank, he, in order to be uh, FDIC uh, insured, he had to literally buy federal treasuries, I think. I think it was, I think it was federal treasury. Yeah, that way it's federal treasuries, uh, as far as that part goes. And he never got a say in what they spent the money on or anything of that nature. So that that's what that is a savings account. That is, to, I guess, that is to make sure that if um, if the bank somehow doesn't have the money to pay, say, interest on already accruing uh, savings within their own bank system, they could then sell uh, cash in those treasuries and put that money into those accounts or whatever the hell else they're, they're going to do. Point being is the Fed has the authority; they can actually, they can print the money for whatever reason is needed, as long as it is either within the banking system for bank use, uh, and or uh, because the Senate or Congress uh, passed a spending bill. Anyway, so let's see interest on the. Uh, Outstanding public federal debt is the fastest growing part of the federal budget and is projected to reach $479 billion in fiscal year 2020. Okay, so yeah, that just means that those treasury bonds will be, uh, will be, will be overturned. I literally, after, after being told this by Mike Norman, who is also a, who is also MMT or but he does it more or less in regards to the market and all that stuff. When he said, when he talked about the Federal Reserve and the, the account, a daily account, it literally set, sits there and shows how much was redeemed and how much was purchased. So redeemed means the person was able to, was, was able to cash it out and redeem their money. Uh, so there you have it. Um, Let's see. In our, in our present monetary system, ninety-seven percent of new money is created by commercial banks. Actually, it's 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 created by spend by 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 spending uh by spending legislation and by loans. Yes, loans create that money. So, but they have to have reserves on hand in case they can't pay that whatever they have already in the bank. <sighs> yes, ninety-seven percent is uh. And new money is created by commercial banks when they when they make loans. Yes. Besides this power to create more money, uh, banks also decide to uh, to whom the loan should be made. That's depending on the qualifications. Um, this, uh, in effect, also adds power to create wealthy inequality. That, no, that's true. Uh, banks uh, collect interest on all the loans that are made with the with the new money they create also true and recession actually that's the one that was the, that's the one thing they make money on is is bank loans 
uh, to create wealth uh, inequality, banks collect interest on all the loans that are made with the new money they create and recessions are created when banks cut back on lending. Well, that's when the Federal Reserve like cuts back on the uh, on the uh, on the um, not quantitative easing in a way, but on the uh, purchasing of outstanding uh, uh, markets backed securities. Uh, that's what they that, that's what they buy uh, in crisis. Uh, that's what they have been buying, and they all and they turn around and they auction those off. Uh, on the, I think on the open monetary market, that's when they auction off how uh, you know a bundle of houses that, that were foreclosed on the by the bank because the person who owned them or tried to own them couldn't pay for the mortgage or couldn't pay for the uh, yeah couldn't pay for the mortgage. Um, so that's how that happens as far as upward goes. How do you think so many international businesses come in here? Uh, a lot of them come in obviously for business interest, but also they buy lots of property here because they buy in the, in the open in the open monitoring market. They buy lots and lots of freaking property that way, and that's what happened in the in two thousand eight uh, crisis. The banks foreclosed, turned around, sold them to the uh, to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve then turned around and sold them internationally. And that's how you got that. At least that's that's the way I'm understanding it. And that makes more sense to me than how these guys are trying to play it. And this is one of the reasons why I'm no longer a Green Party member. Um, anyway, so it's obvious that the uh, added debt to the government is of little benefit to the general po population as it held primarily by the federal and the, by the financial sector. It adds to the extreme wealth inequality in which uh, in turn, as to the rise in poverty, obviously the 42 million Americans living in poverty do not benefit from any saving of uh, treasury securities. In our present monetary system, 97 percent. Oh wait, I've already read that. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, kind of gone off on a tangent there. Besides its power to create money, banks also decide to whom the loan uh, would be made. Yeah, this is in effect also adds power to create wealth inequality. Banks collect interest. I've already read this part. I'm sorry. Uh, da, da, da. Amount of new money in uh, calculation, circulation. This power of private banks resulted in the economic crash in 2008, which shifted much wealth to the already wealthy segment of the population. Uh, see, the Green Party platform uh, presents a well thought out plan that. Per that Th uh, through legislated legislation both removes the commercial banks uh, the power to create new money and gives back to the government its constitutional right to create debt free money proponents of this reform support the idea that the government should be able to spend on programs necessary to promote the general welfare by spending new money uh, directly into the economy but until legislation is passed to Legislation is passed, implement, that's how the spend is through legislation, is passed to implement reforms. It is not possible for the government to do this without creating deficits that add to the already out of control national debt. <sighs> anyway, that's how I see it. Uh, yeah, uh, damn, I lost my step already. Uh, da -da -da -da. Wish I could end this out. <laughs> to use misleading tactics in an effort to retain our present monetary system, and definitely as the status quo. It's the total freaking opposite. Literally, it's the opposite of what this person is is making it seem like. And my monetary theory. I mean, the reason why. I mean, if you look at the fact that uh, the banks control uh, things, corporations are controlling everything. They pay to get people elected. Those people do their bidding. It, well, that in my thought process, the way to adapt to a monetary system is to learn how that system works, not just fight against it. Um, but you also don't have to go in the way they're going in regards to their policies of what they do. The point of, I mean, the reason why I get on AOC and all of them is because they go with the Democrats far too much. 
they don't keep they, they don't not they don't disvote anything that as far as they know about the, the democrats have except for maybe three or four things they have but in the last few years they haven't they haven't pushed back on much of anything in regards to their votes you know withholding their votes again a tangent i'm i'm kind of infamous for that anyway so let's see originally let's see where is this at uh yeah, there we go now the reason why and i didn't really even know what the definition of heterodox until really or at least paid attention uh to the point where it got into my head it was until now until i was actually doing some uh uh in regards to it um heterodox is pretty well i think i i think i already looked into that actually Anyway, point being is the fact that it's kind of anti what the system is. So if, if they're, they're, I mean, that is kind of going, that itself is kind of going against what the Green Party is saying in that article because MMT is heterodox. It means is anti the current system, which means it's trying to teach you how the current system actually works and how you can actually make money or learn from it. That's the whole point of it being called a heterodox economic uh, 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 economics, and it's no longer a theory. If you if you catch my drift on that, anyway, uh, let's see. I think that was pretty much yep. And on Twitter, I was saying that it's not a. Uh, there was a, a picture out there with the uh, empty shelves. Uh, and I've been saying this for fuck for, for a long time, just like a lot of MMPs were doing, or people who are who look at the um, who look at the uh, economics from an M- MMT type of standpoint. Once people got money, they started spending. Once they started spending, that kept co- uh, that kept uh, corporations up. The corporations didn't 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 have to go to the fed or to uh to uh their friends in congress to get a bailout they didn't have to do that because people got money because people were able to pay some rent pay down bills um stuff of that nature since the globalization uh in the late 90s by the clinton administration they put everything together which meant you couldn't just sit there get a car and if you effed up somewhere and you lost your job you couldn't pay for it you could you know before it goes on your credit you can go and get in a car uh and you know get in a job uh but when they tied everything together uh that really good thing that really fucked things up because that meant that even if it wasn't your fault but you got fired or you lost your home or something like that that still went on your credit so that meant that it was still harder for you to get whatever kind of thing you want some places when they when they hire they look at a person's credit also and just you know especially yeah uh home loans i can see that car loans i can kind of see that but i don't think it's necessary for, for those two things especially if you're especially if you uh if you have a pattern of paying your bills and paying things off and stuff like that um but that's where the whole thing messed up because they globalized the economy they allowed for outside uh uh outside countries to purchase properties to purchase uh stocks and all that stuff which is fine but they didn't put a limit on it they didn't say you can, only, you can only purchase this much because we're trying to allow more of our own citizens to be able to purchase you know that sort of thing you know they uh, they, they they didn't allow there should be a balance there and there wasn't as far as i could see but anyway the point being is the fact that I'm hoping that I did. I, I'm hoping that I did uh, what I was trying to do, and that's debunk a lot of stuff that the Green Party in that in that one article uh, was saying. Um, and I hope I did a, a decent job at that. Uh, I will be marking up an article as well later on. Uh, I'll be putting that somewhere uh, by my Substack. Um, and apparently, uh, I'm going to be doing audio, I think. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And I hope that you learned something. I hope that you looked into it and you understood what I was talking about. Um, if not, you can email me at uh, greenautistsprogressive at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. Peace out for now. Oh, yes. And by the way, also later on, I'll be I'll be doing a regular uh, Just Calvin. I talk about stuff or I talk about whatever. It's a new show.